You're listening to The Deranged Nation, a true crime podcast featuring New York Times bestselling paranormal romance author and your host, Teresa Gableman. Hey, welcome to the second episode of Deranged Nation. Hi. Hey, what's up, everybody? What's up? So we are going to do the West Memphis 3 case. But before that, I wanted to tell you guys what happened last night. Finally. Yeah. So finally, I've been watching a lot. Well, in between like word counts and deadlines, I've been watching a lot of documentaries and reading a lot. And I've been finding, which is really scary. And, and it kind of has to do with the West Memphis 3. Um false confessions and so (laughs) so last night you know i had a hard time sleeping so i finally went to sleep and i woke up this morning and i was like what in the actual hell was that i had a dream oh shit i know and and the thing is okay okay the thing is dreams two two of the the documentaries i watched these guys were kind pretty much convicted because of dreams so here we go what and i actually googled to make sure this guy was still alive (laughs) oh my god he is i had a dream that i killed captain lee have you guys what (laughs) captain lee dude he's my dude why would you kill captain lee man he's cool so captain (laughs) we don't know know who captain lee is have you ever seen below deck that is have you ever seen below deck what is that again? It's it's a yacht, and they, it's like a... Does he throw the cleaner lady off of it? No. no. That's overboard. <laughs> <laughs> that's overboard. He runs like... He, he has one of those big luxury yachts, and people pay to go okay. out on it. Big okay. rich people go. Okay. And they... It's pretty much a reality show about the yacht. Oh, okay. But yeah. he's the captain, and he's cool. Oh, he's wait, an old dude. I think I know okay. exactly what not, it is. He's not real old. He's probably... Yeah, he's badass. It's, it's real. real. It's real. It's real shit. Okay. Yeah. Why yeah, would you, I know what why it is. Why would you kill Captain I Lee, man? I don't know. <laughs> and I woke up like, what? This is an alleged dream, by the way. Yes, this yeah, is wait, a dream. Hold on, I have a question. Yeah. How'd you do it? <laughs> I don't even know. So, I mean, I don't even know. She don't even know. Oh, so no. you don't even know. But I don't even know if I actually did it. Ah. Oh. I don't even know. I just, yeah, it was the weirdest thing. And I was like, okay. I, mean, I know maybe, exactly what you mean. But maybe you need to close, you know, slow down a little bit on the documentaries. But the thing is... <laughs> And I guess I've been watching a lot of it because everyone that I've watched, including the one we're getting ready to talk about, false, you know, false confessions. Yeah, It's scary. I mean, it can really, it's happened to a lot of people and there's probably a lot more in jail right now, in prison right now. That Stephen still- Avery's a big one. <sighs> yeah, I think, I think uh, more she researches, the more she's finding out how real yeah. it is, you know, yeah. how common yeah. it is yeah. actually. And well, how the, not talked about it is. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. The one that I watched um, last night was called Dream Killer. And the guy, I, you know, it's, I'm not going to get way into it, um, but he was accused because this friend, well, not really a friend, they were acquaintance. I don't even think they really hung out. Right. But somehow he got dragged into this guy who... He did, he did drugs. He did, you know, was drinking. Yeah. Was drinking this night. And somehow this guy's three years later says, yeah, I did it. I did this. And Ryan Ferguson did it with me. What? Yeah. And it, it was just terrible. But they ended up feeding this. This guy did not know anything about the crime scene or anything. And you could hear the detectives feeding him information and when you know what you're listening or looking for when you're watching something like that and you know it's a false confession yeah you can actually see how they're working yeah and to me that's that's really really scary that there's a lot of people in prison now there's there's some you know that well you know the scary guilty yeah the scary thing is is 
you know, from what we're going to talk about that happened, what they forced the alleged West Memphis three killers, those three guys, what they kind of forced them to do with all the false accusations. I don't think the states can afford all the wrong accused people that they put in prison. I don't think <laughs> yeah. they can literally afford to pay these people out for ruining their lives. Well, yeah. exactly. If you think about how many people yeah. really did get falsely accused and the people who have won cases and how much they actually get for when they're exonerated, I don't think fucking, all millions. I don't think they can afford right millions. Well, all I'll tell you, off. you know, the, this Ryan's father, he just, I mean, he he went to bat for his kid which you know of course who would i would too right um but he knew his son didn't <clears throat> didn't do it well there was actually a very big attorney who told her husband she read a little bit about it and she told her husband she said and she's gotten a lot of people out of prison that didn't belong there and she said if that family contacts me i will take that case pro bono a week later what was her name father, again i'm gonna have i don't i don't know i didn't write it, it down it might be the same attorney who had Stephen she's avery's badass. case yeah she's awesome i follow her on twitter let me see if i can find yeah, it. yeah I, if i hear the name i'll know it but in they were pretty much i mean this prosecutor the things that they and i'm talking about a totally different case than what we're doing but it was it's called dream killer so if you guys want to see it, it's on netflix it's really actually really good but what they did to this kid, man, and the the sounds like you're the dream killer. <laughs> I know. What is wrong? What is happening? Kathleen Zellner. Yes, she's that's awesome. Her. Yes, she is, and she's smart, man. And they're afraid of her when they they did everything in their power to get her not to be on that case. Well, she gets part of that money after they get exonerated. That's why you know what I mean. Well, and the when thing she is, takes that lawsuit to court and. Yeah, and the thing is, the you know, she said prosecutors, you know, the more cases that they win, the more people they put away. And I'm not saying this about all prosecutors, right. I mean, but there are some. She said this one was the worst that she's ever seen because usually when prosecutors see that, oh, okay, yeah, you know, but she said this prosecutor, he blatantly wanted this done over with taken care of he didn't care pretty much who yeah who it was but yeah anyway you guys need to watch it once it's, they it's stop really getting good. passionate about it that's what happens when they're yeah. in it for so long they just right. get done they don't care anymore it's people's lives so yeah that was pretty weird yeah so mm. i need to slow down i guess a little bit. yeah well i mean like what we're gonna talk about you know this you know these three kids were putting in the put in prison for or almost went to prison and for uh just because basically the town was getting so pissed at the cops that they hadn't they hadn't caught the exactly caught the guys yet so it's sometimes they're, sometimes they're pressured you know i mean their jobs are on the line especially if it's an election year or something like that yeah you know they get antsy and or you want to be up to a judge <laughs> yeah so um yeah exactly but on the uh, West, so on the case we're going to do tonight, the West Memphis Three, um, I just want everybody to know that this is strictly our opinions and we're not, you know, we watched three of the documentaries, um, read on the internet. So, like I said, this is our opinions and we would like to hear your opinions on this case also. So... West Memphis Three, there was, um, and it's kind of sad, and it's not kind of, it really is sad, but in 1993, three eight-year-olds, Stevie Branch, Christopher Byers, and James Moore were murdered. And um, the way they were murdered, and that's something we're going to get into, but I'm going to give you like the rundown, and then we're just going to talk about it and bring things up. So Damon Eccles, Jesse Miskelly, and Jason Baldwin were all convicted of this crime. And when I watched the first, and it, I want to know if you guys felt the same way, when I watched the first document, documentary, Paradise Lost, Murders at Robin Hood Hills, I thought I knew who did it. I'm like, they're guilty as hell. Yeah. They are guilty as hell. I know. We felt that way, too, honestly, the first time we watched it. 
And then as it started going along and I'm thinking, oh, maybe, you know, that's so we'll get more into that in a little bit. Yeah, honestly, the first time I the first time I watched it, I thought it was maybe just just Damon or Damien, not Damon, sorry, Damien. I thought it might have just been him and the other ones might have got, you know, drug into it or whatever. But and Jason Baldwin just looked too, too innocent and too, I don't know. Jesse, well, if anything, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, Jesse, the the way that they got pulled in, the way that because it went thirty days without them knowing anybody, you know, without them figuring out having any suspects. Yeah. Um. So, Damien had been through the um justice, you know, juvenile, and one of the juvenile officers obviously pointing him out because they were saying there was sans, you know satanic ritual stuff going on which we'll get into that and you'll see really that there wasn't yeah and so they pointed to him well they looked around to see who he hung out with which was jason baldwin which was a very close friend of his yeah and jesse miss kelly and by the accounts that i've read they really weren't they weren't really that close of friends but jesse Miss Kelly had a low IQ and they took him in first and interviewed him. Yeah. Yeah. They led him into some questioning and then some of the church people were, were talking about Damien and, and, and really Jason Baldwin. I mean, I mean to kind of paint a picture for the people listening real quick. I mean, when they got arrested, Jason Ball, he had a mo- like a mullet, long hair, kind of Joe Dirt looking hair, mullet. Yeah. And a Metallica shirt with a denim jean jacket. The way we looked denim, in the 80s. Denim vest. Was he 16 like years me. old? Yeah, 16. He yeah. was 16 whenever Damien, he was arrested. Damien was, yeah, Damien was 18, Jesse was 17, and Jason was 16. Yeah. yeah. Damien kind of looked like a little Motley crew. Yeah, little mo- little little ringleaderish. I don't know. <laughs> and they were diff. I mean, they were just different. They yeah. weren't the Bible Belt, you know, which is the area they were mm-hmm. in. Yeah. yeah. So they they were different, and you know, and that's another scary, you know, point. Just because you're different, I mean, that we grew up in the '80s, and all I wore was, and all he wore was all heavy wore metal. Was- Concert T-shirts. shirts, exactly. Yeah. I had long hair and not really a mullet, but at the time it was. Yeah. I think that, yeah, I honestly, I honestly think that the police had um, so much pressure because it was three eight-year-old children. I mean, yeah, if it happened in my neighborhood, I'd want to know who the murderer was, too. Right. There are also, come to find out, some other suspects that actually made more sense than, uh, Damien, Jesse, and Jason, but nothing ever came of it. I feel that, you know, they decided, hey, we got our guys, so yeah, whatever. Yeah, well, why even try? So there's a Chris Morgan and a Brian Holland who was known by the police in West Memphis for drug arrest and things like that. Chris Morgan actually knew the three boys because he drove the ice cream truck. So he was familiar with them. Right. They left shortly after the murders, went to California and were arrested on drug charges and actually did a polygraph with the California police that had to do with the killings and they detected when they were asked if they had any involvement with the three murders they detected deception yeah how um, could that not be sent over that just doesn't make sense to me the chris porgan actually said i may have killed them but i'm not for sure he actually recanted that shortly after the california police sent blood <laughs> and urine samples but no indication 
from the West Memphis police if they ever investigated them after the polygraph. Right. Any, any so further? they got somebody saying, I might have. I don't remember. I black out and... Do things. Hello? Don't... I mean, to me, I don't know. It's just crazy. Yeah, it is. And when they when they were just Jesse, when the police and when you watch in the um, documentaries, first of all, he said it happened at noon, and it did not. The yep. boys, the three boys that were murdered, were in school, and you hear the detective saying, uh, "Are you sure about that? Didn't you say three? And you hear Jesse, uh, well, uh, yeah." Right. They ended up getting it to the six whenever the the you know kids came up missing. Yeah. First, you know, they were clued in that they were missing. He got him down to that time. Um the other thing is the way the boys were found they clued the him in to it was the shoelaces. Yeah. And not what Jesse was saying. You know, which I think he said was what a rope. Yeah. And it's just, I don't know. How can you get the two confused? Yeah. But and 12 here, hours, it was a 12-hour interrogation and what, how 45 minutes of it had been recorded. Exactly. What what happened in those other And he, he was at a wrestling tournament the day of the murders. And then he had witnesses and they just wouldn't hear it. Like, and nobody, nobody wanted to throw that up. Well, it's the, like everybody just kind of forgot the, about the it. Witnesses, like it didn't matter. It's like, dude, he was at a wrestling like tournament. Wrestling's just an hour. You're yeah, right. dude, you're not home until 9, 30, 10 o'clock. From he, early morning all the way. And you're Plus, on the bus. If he was cutting weight, he didn't feel like doing nothing. He had to sign <laughs> in. So <laughs> he, they've got a signature. <laughs> yeah, right. Nothing. Yeah. They've got pictures. Right. And then they had... I, I don't even know how many of the kids come in and say, yes, he was there that day. Yeah, that's ridiculous. So... So, yeah, they have this guy, this Chris Morgan guy who said, I may have killed him, but, you know, but that wasn't obviously important to him. Then they had a Vicki Hutchinson. She had said she went to a Wicca meeting with Damien, but later recanted that. Yeah. So, I don't know. I just think. And then, then they had, we're going to call him, they're calling him Mr. Bojangles. Because he was an African American male who was the manager seen him go into the women's restroom at Bojangles restaurant and locked himself in. He had blood all over. He had mud on his shoes, on his boots. It was like eight o'clock. I yeah. Think. It was right in the that boys time went frame. missing at what six six thirty two or I they think. were reported at some somewhere around that time, yeah, so they you know blood dripping from his elbows too, the yeah. attendant said, yeah, disoriented. The police officers went through the drive through She didn't even come into the freaking place to ask any questions. Because she had to get some chicken fingers. <laughs> hey, Bojangles got some killer chicken She said, chicken there's fingers. boys missing. There's more important things that matter. Okay, well, don't you think that would be important? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jesus. A, a bloody guy in the bathroom. Are you joking? She had to get I ain't got time fingers. for this. I'll, 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 you guys got any chicken fingers? <laughs> Honey, Honey mustard. mustard. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! <laughs> so they, um, the police actually, after they figured out, oh, this may be important, they got some blood samples from the bathroom the next day. The yeah. next day. I think was it the next day or was it like a couple days later? I, I, don't, I don't know. know. It was I don't know. They it ended was up all going screwed out up. there. Eventually. If it was a couple days later, that's pretty messed up for Bojangles not to clean their bathroom. Come on, dude. Come on, Jingle Balls. Come on, Jingle Balls. <laughs> jingle Balls. <laughs> jingle balls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, so on the stand, of the blood person, the blood cop, whatever. I don't know. I don't know the correct term. That uh, got the blood samples, conveniently misplaced them, and the blood he, samples. It was a detective no, thing. No, he literally in court said, "I, I, I lost, I lost him. Lost yeah, it was I, my fault. I lost him. It was my fault. Oh, right. okay, yeah, never mind. It's all right. Lock him up. These guys did it. 
these these boys did it. We're, we got our guy. Yeah. We, right. We found a kitchen knife in the pond behind Jason Baldwin's house. So no, it was a hunting knife. No, dude, it was like a yeah, it was a fish. Bowie knife. There was two oh, different knives. It? There was, it was two like different knives. knives. Well, no, that was the that was the one he gave HBO. I'm talking about when they found scuba diving that, that big. That was a Bowie sur- knife. Oh, that was, was a big it? Bowie knife. Is that yeah. what it was. Conveniently, yeah. they found that after 30 minutes of. But it was rusted. Come on, dude, that thing had been there. It was a fishing spot. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I think I and I could be wrong on this, and I'm pretty sure that the mother or somebody said that that knife had been thrown in there like three years prior. Yeah. So yeah. that knife had been in there for a while. Yeah. Why did they throw it in there three years ago? I don't know. Who knows? Oh. Don't knew that. Probably dropped. Could be. Yeah. Um, at the crime scene too. We'll go over the crime scene a little bit. They were saying, you know, um. First of all, satanic, because of what I do, I research a lot of weird stuff. And hopefully, <laughs> especially after saying about my dream, nobody goes through my history oh on my God. computer. Hopefully they never go through your history. Cause yeah. Shit. Yeah. It, it wouldn't look good on me. But um, usually... And what I've read about it, and I don't know a whole lot. I'm not no expert by far. But usually if they're doing satanic rituals, these people don't want to take anybody that is going to be looked for right away. Three missing eight-year-olds is going to be looked for right away. There was no blood found. Most of the time they use animals, too. They don't. Right. They don't use humans. Most of the time. Right. That we know of. Yeah, that we know of. I don't know. The three little boys that were murdered, uh, Stevie Branch, Michael Moore, and Christopher Byers, right? Yes. They were Cub Scouts? Yes. They were just playing? Yeah. Um, so the they said, and this is another thing, too, that we find out. What? Which one was that? So we have three documentaries. So you're, the first one we just kind of went through, Paradise Lost, which is the first. Um, Paradise Lost, Revelations is the second one. And then Paradise Lost, Purgatory is the third. So I believe it was in two where we find out about the neighbor of... Oh gosh, we didn't find out about that the neighbor the until three? like the third one, and like yeah. and she came out in like two thousand nine. Yeah, that was towards right. the end of the like third when they were one. already yeah. when they were already out convicted and shit. Yeah. So, yeah. um, Steve Branch's uh, stepfather Terry Hobbs, um, he said he he never saw these kids that day. He never saw saw stepson but come to find out that one of the neighbors of um steve stevie branch seen them riding their bikes well two for sure riding their bikes yeah two were for sure on their bikes because stevie was actually outside his house Mm -hmm. or or right by it right down right on the sidewalk and he ran back to his stepfather whenever he was calling for him from what she said right yeah and she she put Terry Hobbs as the last person that's seen the three boys. And they went with him. Yeah. Yeah, and this this is this this one's a roller coaster. I mean, that we even we even so debated much. on if we have to do this in like two parts maybe because there's just there's just so much because yeah. they did such yeah. a li- such a poor job of investigating it in the beginning that so many people just kept looking into this that that uh, social group that started what were they called the just the West Memphis Three support group yep. or something. Yeah, that's exactly group. what it was yeah. called. But yeah. um. Yes, so I mean, all kinds of stuff started coming out, and then, you know, me and me and Dad thought, you know, it was uh, 
we thought it was the one stepdad, the other stepdad, John John Byer, Mark Byers. We thought it was Christopher Byers' stepdad because man, this guy was this guy was whacked, man. He yeah, was from he was just so he loved being on camera. Oh that's my for gosh, sure. he was at oh. every court trial, which I would be too. Which I don't know. I feel he like was Phil burning, was burning. He yeah, was burning grave sites guy. with gasoline yeah. at the site where the bodies were dumped and blowing up pumpkins yeah. and stuff, talking about. Yeah. This is you, Damien. This is you, Jason. Yeah, look at him squirm. Like, yeah. Bull- this shoot, is a on sick on fuck, camera man. of the documentary. You guys will see it if you go and watch it. And He's a sick fuck. I don't know. I still have my <laughs> suspicions about yeah, that I guy. I do too, man. I don't I, know. Like, like, I think he was just happy that they pinned it on somebody else. And yeah, that's yeah. What yeah. Makes, literally. And, and, why would he want to be in the front of the, the camera thing. so Hobbs, much? Yeah. You know? Here's the thing, too. Hobbs... Uh, Terry Hobbs, John Mark Byers, and then there was another guy. Um, what was his name? Oh my gosh, Jacoby. Yes, Jacob. Some guy, Jacoby. Was that Terry's friend? We're like three. Yeah. Okay. And all of a sudden, Terry had an alibi with Jacoby, but Jacoby said no. I was with Mark Byers. So I don't know. I maybe all three of them could have been on. on. I, yeah, we don't but then know. later, whenever they started to look at Terry, Byer said he wasn't never with him. Yeah, but then then supposedly, well, we figured out that they weren't bite marks. But you know, there for a while they thought the kid had the bite marks, and then uh, the Mark Byers went and got dentures after, like right after the documentary happened. So I was really convinced it was for sure him and then yeah. again it took another twist with new evidence and like 2000 something that neighbor and yeah more stuff about Hobbs coming out and a lot of his history hitting the social media I still think it's him well to paint know. a picture though uh, the three eight year old boys were tied at their ankles uh, and their wrists with their shoestrings and dumped into a creek bed that still had a high level of water probably up to your knees in it when they found them. And see, I think the way they were tied made it easy for him to carry them down there. Because they said they had there was no blood. To them too. They, they definitely weren't killed there. No. Because there was no blood around the Absolutely crime scene. Not. And it, it wouldn't have that just washed away like that. That type of stuff sinks into the dirt. Right. You would find it. Right. right. Let's talk about Jesse, how he got railroaded by the police in investigation. Oh, he definitely did. I mean, he spent like over 12 hours. I think they felt like they could easily get a confession out of him. Oh, without a doubt. And wrap this case up. I mean, they knew that he came from a low income household. They knew all three of them did. Oh, None of them yeah. had any money whatsoever. I mean, they came from the slums pretty much. And I mean, Damien even admitted that. I mean, if it wasn't for the mess West Memphis three support group, they probably wouldn't have gotten out because they were the ones who raised the money for a real defense attorney after the trial and everything. Yeah. Yeah, well, Damien even said, like, he he was on death row, and, you know, he just kept appealing and appealing and appealing, and, you know, and uh, finally got, you know, got out. Well, he's, he even said if it wasn't for the support, you know, and actually he said to HBO, who did the documentaries, he said, if it wasn't for you all, I'd be dead already. Yeah, nobody would have got to see these kids' side other than the 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 mm-hmm. news the media the and way the gotta, media portrayed right. these you know and a lot kids. of people were saying oh well you know they didn't show remorse or you know remorse well first of all if you didn't do it they didn't do it. i don't <laughs> think they did it you know and they were and kids they were kids 18 17 and 16 being charged with life in mm. prison death in prison jesse got life in prison plus 40 years yeah. well, and like, you know uh the Metallica songs is throughout the um, three documentaries. And for the first time ever, they gave them permission to use their songs because they seen the documentary and was like, whoa, wait a minute. Yeah. They personally right. have probably felt victimized by people because of the way they dress and act. Well, they all said that they, they could picture that that was them when they were. They were right. Right. Exactly. They, yeah. Just like I said, we wore concert shirts and. I wore band-aids and, and all that all stuff too. Of, so yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, and then I still have a bandana on right now. <laughs> you do. It's, Prosecute me. It's purple. What's wrong with you? It's bright it's colors. Purple. But uh, back to Jesse, Miss Kelly, and the interrogation. I mean, like he said it. Like I was tired. He was like, "Want to go home to his dad?" And, and then, but he said, he said there was an, a reward at the time for any information, twenty five to thirty thousand. And he was thought t- wanted that money to buy his dad a new truck. So he, he, you know, he didn't. None of these kids thought that they were. It was really going to happen because they truly believed that they they knew that they didn't do it. And I, I truly believe they didn't do it. What I didn't understand. Why he got more because he obviously he supposedly you know helped the police, yeah. Supposedly, though, all he did was chase one down yeah. and bring him back, and he ended up getting as much time. And he did, he was more supposed time. to cooperate, yeah. should have got him a lesser sentence, but yeah, he was they a railroaded that poor kid. They man. did, he was originally brought in as a witness, or not a witness, but. Uh, someone that they wanted to get information from about Damien and uh, Jason mm-hmm. originally. And then for the 12 hours that they spent with him, obviously before they decided to start recording it, they, they were coaching him. Yeah, what they, they were said, doing. this is what we're going to do. You know what I mean? Like, and then you'll get this reward money. That's probably exactly what they said to him. Yeah, nobody knows what what was said to him, you know, and, and they, won't, <laughs> they won't discuss it either. Yeah. And I, you know, I want to, I want to make sure, you know, there that it's just like anything, there's bad and there's good. Same thing in the justice and government in any, in life, there's good and there's bad. And the prosecutor was going um, up for, I believe to be a judge. Yeah. He ended up becoming one. And he ended up becoming one. No, I'm sorry. The prosecutor went to Senate or was the, no, the judge. No. Okay. Right. So and all and so there there was a end goal for them too. Uh, the police chief, I believe, was going for something also. He was he became a judge, or he was going to be reelected or something. I mean, that's something you guys can look into yeah. on the facts and stuff. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was pretty. That that part of it was, I'm sure, a little political because that town was pissed. The town mm-hmm. was pissed, and they wanted to know who did it. And they were, you know, there was a bunch of kids, you know, probably, you know, just kind of trying to piss off the church, being rebels, spray painting Satan on there, even though they pr- there probably wasn't even really any sat- real true Satanic. And there may no. have been, but, you know, it definitely wasn't these kids. You can just tell. I just, you know, I when, when I started watching it and hearing that stuff, I mean, not just that, you know, in in the eighties, I I was different too, and but even now today, I write things, and sometimes it's like they really got you know he was exploring different. Uh, Damien was exploring the Wiccan, um, which I've looked into, but because of my work, um, he was exploring all kinds of different things. That's not against the law. We may not agree with that, but it's not against the law to do that. That doesn't say you killed three kids because you listen to heavy metal. You are, you know, looking into the Wiccan. Dressed in black. You're dressed black in black. Fingernails. Yeah, and then uh, this this just popped in my head. Like I said, there's just so much to this. I mean, I, I oh, got another tons. tidbit of some, some fuckery I'd like to call. Um... Uh, some jury mistrial. Yeah, uh, the, that's in the, the that and, you know the guy that uh, weaselled his way into being the jury foreman and said yeah. he was going to be the one that put these kids away and it was going to be him that made sure they went away and you yeah. know before he was even on the jury and yeah. he made and he wasn't even supposed to be on jury duty and he made his way and he even literally said to his own attorney that all stupid what is stupid lawyers and dumb judges and a couple fancy words he or came, something like he that. came into the lawyer's office asking how he could get on that jury he knew that he had to convict this kid yeah and his attorney ended up filing against ended up as he the signed one who an brought affidavit it about it at the end and, and and but still it did no good for these these guys but and then the prosecutor too in the very they painted such a good picture to convince you that it was these boys and like he said to the jury 
which I thought was a little f- messed up. He's like, you know, the, the black fingernails, the black clothes, that's not bad, is it? And then he said, you know, the rock music the, and all that, that's not bad, is it? And then I think he said one more other thing. I'm not for sure what it was, but he's like, but if you put all three of those together, now that's a question. Oh, my and God. I, you know what I mean? It's like, what, what do you mean? You know what I mean? Just that's literally all they had, guys. Like when you guys watch, when you guys go back and end up watching these, if you haven't, the people listening, I mean, that's literally all they had on these guys. Yeah, was it? Was Damien, no really hard had. evidence. Was those no, three things? No hard evidence. Damien at all. and Jason no. were tried separately from uh, Jesse. <laughs> Jesse was convicted before them because of his false confession. So they weren't allowed to use that confession, so-called confession, in their trial. But the well, jury member, the because, leader, yeah, because Jesse refused. They did everything yeah. they could to get him to testify yeah, against they them tried. at yeah. Damien and uh, Jason's trial. So when he refused and flat out said no repeatedly, then they couldn't use that in there. Yep, that's probably when they said, "All right, that's cool. We'll, we'll just figure it out. We'll get it in yeah. there. He Someone brought it in put there. you away for life and yeah. forty. Well, and then too, like he the- probably. I think. I think there was something about him going up to the prosecutor or something. The jury, the lead jury guy. I can't remember what his name is. But um, I think he went up to the prosecutor saying he really needed to get on the case at some point, too. Mm-hmm. Or was trying to talk to him about it and everything else. Yeah, yeah that and that's yeah, there a, was a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, that's a big no-no. This, you know, well, and, of- and that was like, okay, so, you know, their lawyers, and I think they actually, Damien, uh, the only one that didn't was Miss Kelly, but Damien and Jason were tried together. They each had their separate lawyers. But I believe those two, for their appeals and stuff, got different lawyers. I guess I don't know exactly what happened with that. Right. But Jason's lawyer was with him till the end, pretty much, I think. He tried. Was it Jason? I know Jesse's It was, was. Damien's. Yeah. He got Damien's a different lawyer. attorney. No, yeah, Damien's the lawyer, they were, yeah, we, Damien got a different one because they thought the other guy didn't do a good job. Right, right. That because was one of their Jason's bases. lawyer was the guy with the ponytail. So he's like, yeah, he stayed yeah. with but him. He, he didn't stay, though. He, yeah. he I left, too. I thought he stayed through the whole thing. No, he left, too. I thought Jesse was, was the only Jesse's one that was the stayed. only one that David and stayed Oh, it was Jesse. Stayed I'm sorry. The yeah, I thought guy, so. Curly-headed guy. He stayed with and went for basically all three of them, I get, You know, right. it kind of turned into, you know, but this case was so much more about, I think, uh, like the documentaries and stuff was a lot more about proving these guys innocent than it was about actually finding out who did it. Well, but they wanted you to see things from every point. Right. right? So you could think every way and it's not all, you know, all they're just trying to make it about them, you know, not doing it. Well, and they didn't, there are some things they didn't paint in a good light about Damien, Jesse, and, yeah, exactly. and Jason. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it wasn't, they were just really, I believe, and what I've read on the research and there, I, I have, I guess there's only so much you can get that these were very long documentaries, yeah. two hours a piece. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm sure there was more that we don't know about. Right. That's why I said this is our opinion based on what we saw. Mm-hmm. Um, well, one thing we do know is they didn't have no good hard evidence no. to fucking convict these no. kids, man. No. And they, no. they didn't no. find M- any much evidence. Much people have done much worse and gotten away with nothing than these kids. I mean, these yeah. guys spent their whole, my whole, ever since I was born in prison. I mean, yeah. they, they went to prison in 94. So yeah. they basically 94. were in prison my and they got out. Yeah. Which we're going to talk talk about right. that. Yeah. I think unless I just No. No, that's what that's coming no. Right. That's coming up next. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I've said it like a couple times like they they're out and the, no yeah. wait, we're not starting that yet. No. So, well, <laughs> yeah. With the um, with the documentaries and HBO, there was a lot of support for um, Damien, Jesse, and Jason, including a lot of stars, bands. There was Metallica, of course, and the Dixie Chicks. It was Eddie Vader? Who? Eddie Vader. Yeah, Eddie Vader, and then um, Johnny Depp, and there was more. Um, I'm sure that came out. So, 
what were you going to add on that? Oh, the yeah. Media? A thing about the media. Uh, whenever these three boys were arrested, the media had done put it out there that, you know, they arrested the three men who did this. So everyone had that mindset that this is it, you know, no matter what, these are the people who did it. So, I mean, the prosecutors and the detectives really couldn't or didn't want to piss anybody off considering they were going up for Senate and judge and everything else. So they were like, oh, we got to we have to do this. Well, and the, the appeals that they did always went to that judge. Same judge, judge. every the time. Same judge. And of course, he is going to be like, my courtroom did not make any mistakes. Absolutely. Right. And finally... It went in front of the Supreme Court, and they the introduced the state Supreme Court, and they introduced new evidence, which was John Byers' knife. That was the pocket knife that he actually gave to the crew, one of the crew members of HBO. Mm-hmm. When they looked at it, there was blood, so they handed it in. Yeah, they gave it to that detective. And, of course, they couldn't, you know, nothing came of that. Right. And the teeth marks, which Damien, Jesse, and Jason all did bite impressions. Their bite impressions did not match the bite marks that was totally missed in the first trial. Yeah. That was never even brought up. And new DNA testing and physical evidence, which was the hair from Terry Hobbs. Yeah. That was found in the knot of one of the shoelaces. Wow. And then there was another hair that belonged to, they don't, I mean, they can't pinpoint. They said hair analysis is one of the toughest. Yeah. I remember him saying, saying like, it was 1% something i can't remember exactly you guys will have to watch it but nowadays it's a little bit better than it was in 90 in the 90s oh yeah yeah and especially dna yeah now this is crazy so remember mr bojangles this hair that they found mr. was Jingle actually yeah. from an african-american uh, so you got yeah. that and then you had the foreman and jury misconduct yep so once the state Supreme Court heard this, they're like, you guys get a new trial. They was a, they were in favor for a new trial for them. So this, in 2011, and all this takes so long. Well, they were set up with the, uh, evi- um, I don't an know. evidentiary hearing. It was yeah. coming up yeah. within four months after they had after been granted su- that evidentiary court. hearing. Yeah, and they also ruled out, so in the in the. In the first trial, they said that because one of the one of the boys, uh, his uh, you know little guy, his his penis was mutilated, yeah, and, and stuff. So they they used that as saying it was sacrificial to Satan and satanic stuff. And they had this guy on there supposed to be a professor that called in the first trial, and um, but they later they they also uh, somebody came to say that a lot of that stuff was from uh, animals. Yep. Um, signs yeah, of actually, animal scratching and and uh, claw marks from like birds coming down yeah, and picking and, at them. So <sighs> this is funny. You guys didn't watch the. It, it wasn't part of the three part documentary, but this was um, West of Memphis, and it's on Amazon Prime. And it was the fourth one that I watched about the trial, about the whole thing. I almost watched it all. <laughs> and then, yeah, you fell asleep. I fell asleep. Shaka. I fell asleep once in a so while. So, <laughs> they ha- when they were talking about the animals, and, and that came in a lot, and then the person that I feel that could have possibly done this, it was a lot about him, which is Terry Hobbs. And that was Stevie Branch's stepfather. But... um. They actually had this guy who was, I guess, a you know, an expert in animal stuff. He, this snapping turtle is the biggest snapping turtle <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. And they held it, and this guy held his arm out and let the snapping turtle bite him. And I'm, like, freaking out when I'm watching this. That dude's nuts. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no this sucker way. snapped onto his arm. So when they pulled it off, it looked 
actually like that bite mark that was on his head. I didn't on... think it looked like a human bite mark. No, I didn't, I didn't either. either. I never I, did. I was, it was too. It, it would look more like a turtle. It like literally. A they, turtle, they were saying but... that they used the not that uh, scaling knife or whatever. Well, I was, I was, I was really convinced for a minute because uh, old old John got a got a denture job. Yeah. Did you guys did you guys <laughs> see when he was getting all mad? Hey, did you see when he was getting all mad at them? Uh, the the West Memphis Three support group on the steps at one of the hearings. Yeah. And he went. He was trying to pull his dentures out in that big long jump <laughs> rope of slobber. <laughs> yeah. His mouth. He's like, oh, I can't do bite pressures because I got that denture. <laughs> like, dude, this like big old Here's my slobber teeth. <laughs> comes out. Oh my gosh! And he's still gumming it, just talking. <laughs> like, dude, this. Uh, guy oh man you guys he's a will get a kick man. out of this guy yeah. oh I think my he's, gosh i think he's guilty <laughs> i don't know I, I mean yeah whatever remember my, to drop a comment after you watch it and tell us what you guys think yeah. about mr byers or if you've yeah. seen it already right. yeah, which, which, yeah which he which he's obviously a on drugs he went to he went to prison for some drugs okay, eight so years yeah on, uh, okay for in because i think it's somebody at first when i first <laughs> okay at first i thought it was the three yeah and then i was like eh. then i started going toward john mark they called him both yeah so but christopher Bri- briar's uh stepfather then i'm thinking this guy's crazy so possibility yeah but then i really started thinking about terry hobbs but this now this is weird and i was kind of shocked but his wife which was christopher byer's mother um died under weird circumstances and to date yeah. i don't think that they've ever it was undetermined said, it's it was undetermined, undetermined still to this day yeah. and, and she was real uh vengeful and kind of mean if, if anybody yeah. looked satanic it was, it was her. her for sure yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, i'm gonna say though as a mom i mean nothing you me, said it had no, a lot to do I'm with drugs though joking, yeah, yeah she she, she was was actually well, yeah. that, from what he says yeah but I'm sorry. You know, a lot of people say, well, the parents were acting this way, that way. I hope to God and thank God I've never had to know how I would act in a situation like that. Yeah. yeah. Who's to say what is normal in a situation? No, yeah. Yeah. That way? It's, yeah. I mean, you know, you can definitely. But I can't imagine. Yeah. Especially if you're on drugs. I mean, it's, obviously it's probably be intensified. A yeah. yeah. And a lot of people said stuff about Stevie Branch's mom. One of the interviews she did, she was acting really like, "Oh, I'm on TV." Yeah, and I know. I mean, really, it for, was really kind of strange. For as but Christiany as this town was supposed to be in religion, I mean, there was there was some, there was a lot of a lot shady. Of, these people had some kind of whacked histories. I mean, even yeah. Mark Byers had some whacked history, and, and his wife, and and there was a lot of stepdads. Yeah, and Terry <laughs> yeah. Hobbs uh, and his wife uh, Stevie's mother got a divorce too they weren't even together anymore oh and he then the find out he bounced to what two weeks after the murders yeah he disappeared hobbs he broke up with her and dipped like two weeks after the murders and then came back are you i'm pretty sure yeah i'm not no i I think he's gone after that because they said who's the one person you guys haven't heard much about his mom started (laughs) his mom started (laughs) saying uh uh, it was him, and like later on in the two thousands, that he was capable of it. Yeah. yeah. Well, and yeah, the, I, the, like the I news. said, if you, I, th- I feel that if you would watch the fourth one, you would see where I'm coming from. I know you can't because the way he was acting, and I, and here you go again. I've never been accused, and hopefully after my opening, <laughs> I never will be. Um, <laughs> But I've never been accused of anything like that. So I can't say how I would act. But he, um, very abusive. He was, he was very, and it came out. I mean, there was pictures of her. And I think she started thinking, whoa, what's going on? Um, just, there's just so much to the story. Well, there was also, there was also some stuff I read online that never came up in anything I seen in the documentary, just on my own research, uh, 
but some a lot of accusations of uh, him being bisexual and being caught making out with that Jacoby guy mm-hmm. and some who, people seeing him doing that. See, who that's was his So that's a big thing in the in a religious community. You know what I mean? They, well, I'm the sure over there they're it, not. It, like I said, this is as, our opinion. Or, and, this and is especially not. in the '90s, definitely wasn't very acceptive of that. Yeah, yeah if they yeah. walked up into that, yeah, or, so. Come on now, he'd probably be like, get, get yeah, over here I, now. I, well, I the boys were the boy. Some the what? Two of the boys were sexually. No, that was proven that, that they weren't. They weren't. They were, oh, yeah, they, it was they, proven. They, it was that proven they, were they were never raped. Or yeah. Not. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, th- I yeah. thought that was. Yeah. Later on, it was fact. proven they were never raped. Yeah. They wanted to make sure, clearly it was someone who knew what they were doing. They wanted to make sure that the evidence that was left, like their clothing, for example, was yeah, they, yeah, bring not, that up. yeah, because yeah. uh, they shoved his clothing down into the mud with the with stick, stick to try to hide, you know, obviously any DNA from them or hair, anything like that. Yeah. And, and, and Chris Byers, suppose with saw the kid, Chris had... You know, uh, he took Ritalin and had AD, you know, he had some, uh, some temper problems, real crazy. Supposedly he wasn't getting his medication. Some people said his mom was taking it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and this is all like, a, you know, accusations yeah, that this is flown you know, around. Ta- if, if you guys like, Google this, you'll see what we're talking about. There's a lot. There's some, there's some the stuff where you have to kind of, you have to kind of feed through that. You're like, ah, well, I don't know about that. But then again, there's some that you're like. Yeah, you don't really know because we weren't there. This Unfor- is what. Unfortunately, there are three that definitely know, and they can't speak. They've yeah. been silenced, yeah. I, and that's the that's the tragedy of this whole story, because I feel that the murder got away with it. Yeah, yeah, and you know, in 2011, these three boys, now men, have spent 18 years and 78 days. In, in prison being accused of killing three kids and what happened was they you know they got their new trial and all of a sudden the media is alerted that they're going into court now and this After was like that yeah, all of a sudden a small hearing. circuit court popped up yeah you know once they realized oh shit this is gonna go to a new judge yeah yeah yeah, well, they, yeah. The, what, was the state, what was memphis west memphis and said that they could not pay that out it would be detrimental to the state itself well then that's they after, said it but this is after okay so what what these guys did and this was after their lawyers and i believe kind of a deal yeah. I guess. The Alfred plea is what they call it. Yeah, yeah. the Alfred, Alfred plea. plea, which is they are still pleading guilty, but they can say that they're innocent of the crime. But they had to plead guilty so they couldn't sue the court for fucking locking them the state. up. Yep. Or the, yeah, state. the state. The state literally, though, the prosecutor, like she said, literally was like, we can't afford this, basically, in, in like lawyer terms. It, he, it would be detrimental to the state. He said it really, state. really, like you know, to the to the common ear, you wouldn't think nothing of it, but to someone who knows, you're like, oh shit! So like, <laughs> you'd go broke if these dudes took you to court. <laughs> to, to be honest with you, I'm a, I think they were afraid of the new evidence, and I think for a fact that because I'm sorry, I think that if they thought they could win this case and they did no wrong. And the they weren't afraid of the new evidence. Yeah, I think they would have tried it and and tried to say no, we got the right guys. But they do this Alfred plea. Yeah, they've got this on their head. But like Damien said, he said now instead of being behind bars trying to figure out who the real killer is, we can do it on the outside. I love it. Now Jason at, did not want to take the deal. He was like, no, absolutely not. I don't want it. I'm not guilty. And finally, and I think even his, uh, I think it was his, um, f- a friend of his, you know, was really nervous because she didn't know what he was going to do. He hung up on her, like, because she tried to say, you can get out. Yeah. He's like, no, I'm not guilty of this. I don't want this deal. He went into court and he actually pled for the Alfred deal. And he said the reason he did it is because he knew if he didn't, then the chances of Damien being put to death yeah. was very high. He did it for his best friend I mean, 18 years later. They were later. running out of 
options and you know for him to do that you know for somebody you know that says a lot yeah yeah well like you like you were telling me um when you're like uh inmates like that or what would co-defendants co-defendants like yeah they don't you don't even talk to each other you're not allowed to write each other discuss your case absolutely not it would be because every time any piece of mail goes to any jail prison it's open and read oh yeah oh and yeah. then every envelope you get calls, handed everything yeah everything you get handed is opened whenever you get it period and you're if it's somebody who's your co-defendant and marked as somebody you're not allowed to speak to they keep it and it's turned into a lawyer well, and the thing is with with Damien, because he was on death row. Yeah. He did not get to see much of the light of day. I'm actually, um, Life After Death Row, I believe is what it's called. Uh, it's his book that he wrote. And I'm not all the way through it yet, but, you know, he has to wear tinted glasses outside because of his eyesight. Yeah. His health was failing. Oh yeah, um, cement you're on box death will row. do that to you. You're on death row. You're there walking not- on cement nonstop will destroy your body. I think the one thing that believe really- it or not, and they don't give you all the vitamins and nutrition that you need in there by any means. I think the one thing that really bothered me too. I mean, this whole case bothered me actually. But one thing was when they found out that the state supreme court was going to accept this. They took everything of his out of the cell, his books, everything. Wow. And that's, you know, ugh, that just, that kind of stuff, you know. Our, Wasn't I've, he raped too? Yeah. And he actually filed a lawsuit. Yeah. Over that. Yeah. Over that. Yeah. I haven't gotten into that. I've read accounts about that, but right. I haven't, I haven't gotten to that point. Yeah. Same. I just remember him mentioning it in the documentary at some mm-hmm. point. So I think we all, I mean, my, uh, my opinion, I'm not accusing, I'm just saying my opinion, I believe Terry Hobbs had something to do with it. I do too. Um, my I don't opinion. know about Mark slash John Byers. I did think that, but then my mind changed. I don't know, unless he wanted to, you know, hide a crime in plain sight he was just too visible. Yeah, man. Terry Hobbs was never on camera until like the third and the one I watched. He tried to sue the Dixie Chicks because yeah. he was like, they hurt my feelings. Ended they up, said bad stuff about me. Ended up putting yeah. him in a deposition and he had to answer a bunch of questions, questions. that you knew he wasn't going to want to talk about about the boys' murders. Yeah. I don't know. Like I said, you know, it, the unfortunate thing about this whole case is there's you know three little boys that lost their lives and brutally brutally and that's just tragic and you had three that i feel was and i honestly think that the court you know in 2011 believed that they were possibly falsely accused also i mean can you imagine sitting in jail for 18 years And I know a lot of people in jail say, I didn't do it. I'm innocent. But I'm finding out more and more that there actually are a lot more innocent people in there than I ever even dreamed. Yeah. And it's really scary that, you know, these kids were different. Um, Well, I think the media plays a big role in it, too. I do, too. Oh, dramatic. Once they... they have their thoughts they convince you're convinced they convince the people that's how it works that's how it works nowadays regardless yeah i mean especially too i mean the way they took these boys in i mean these were kids and it was a it was a looked like they were bringing down freaking isis a damn terrorist the way they were taking these kids out of the house and stuff you know what i mean and they weren't even proven guilty yet you know what i mean like so yeah so no actual evidence period Al- i mean every news channel was in their front yard before they even knew they were getting arrested yeah 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 that's sick <laughs> i mean it's literally crazy, jason man. baldwin and damien said they were just sitting on the couch watching tv and like we're like oh shit it's the cops and hit, hit in the room like kids would do like oh right. shit yeah. you know what i mean next thing you know they're, they're, they're probably in- <laughs> coming from a weed yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. i mean yeah and I think that, you know, 
it's like nowadays it's like you're innocent you're guilty until you're proven innocent yep. nowadays it's yep. just crazy yeah. that's the way things are now yeah. and it's not supposed to be that way no you're it's innocent not. until you're proven guilty and the whole justice system's switched it's done a 180 yeah there's another here i go again here there's another documentary that i started watching <laughs> last night but it's um rikers island have you ever heard of that jail yeah oh it's bad whoa i was f- i mean i even was like watching it it's like the most violent criminals i think too and they it, it, and it poor is that the- where they put epstein and manafort I think Manafort. I know, man. I'm pretty sure Manafort's at Riker. I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know if that's where they were or not. But the thing is, if you were poor, which most of them are, and you can't get bail, they send you, they sent this 16 year old. I'm not even going to say what the documentary is because I'm not done with it. But they sent him there, and he hasn't even gone to trial. Trial can take to have a trial. To even say that you're guilty of what you've done can take up to two to three years. You should be held in county. They and shouldn't have like, put him in a prison for yeah. So he was he was golden until he went there. Now he's just so screwed up because he didn't do what they accused him of doing. Yeah, and he spent like three years in this jail, and it was just terrible. I was just like, oh my gosh. Yeah, it's terrible. But anyway. So, well, that that is the case of the West Memphis Three. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Drop yeah. a comment. Let us know what you think. Subscribe. Tell me your favorite uh, John Byers quote. <laughs> After you watch it, yeah. <laughs> oh, God, love him. Seriously. Poor guy. Yeah. He's whacked. Oh, man, He's he whacked. really is. Dude. And, you know, I, like I he said, really man. something else, man. They also, oh, God, I think, got way. compensated, though, didn't they? Yeah. For, yeah. yeah, he got. Sure. Oh, he yeah. was a drug addict for a while, <laughs> so he was like, <laughs> I'll jump in end. front of that yeah. camera. Yeah. There at the end, he was. You couldn't get him away from the camera. Yeah. And then at the end, he ended up joining the West Memphis Three support group. Yeah. Wearing yeah. the t-shirts and shit. Yeah. Had a whole poster board about how he, Terry Hobbs did it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he had it he all had written out. Yeah, yeah, he wrote it. I thought, I thought it was pretty cool, though, him, him and Damien, like even Damien writing See? him back. And, yeah. You know, but, you know, but but still, uh, you know, uh, I still don't trust the guy. He's still a little whack. But. And, you know, like I said, this is our opinions, and I you yes. know, could yeah. totally be off the mark. There's three we little ones that have, know we, who did it. Yep. And, and we may not even have all the evidence. Or murder. I mean, there's a ton of stuff. I mean, the more you keep reading, the different stuff you start finding out. And well, and I know. And the last it, I heard that Jason was still, and I think they all would be. I, I don't know about Jesse, but I know Jason is really, I think Jason is really looking to try to find who did it to clear his name. You know, yeah. he's still a murderer. Yeah. He's still a murderer. Sad. Yeah. And hopefully they get to the bottom of it and it can be, you know, reviewed again at right. some point. So we'd like to hear your all's opinion. Watch uh, if you get a chance. You, that's what, two, six hours? <laughs> six hours of TV time. And if you watch a fourth one, that's eight hours of TV time. But the documentary is actually really well, well done. So... Yeah, the first three are on Amazon Prime for free if you have Prime. Yeah. Yes. And then the uh, West Memphis three, is, or West of Memphis, is, uh, I think it's like the rent, like four something. Yeah, there's there's one more movie that's supposedly about it, The Devil's Not. Yeah, I haven't seen I that haven't yet. I haven't seen that either, and I don't know what side it's from. I don't know if it's from like a, the tragedy of a town and it makes the three look out to be... I killers or if it makes them out to look innocent i'm not for sure yeah i didn't get a chance i, I wanted to watch it either, before so. we did this podcast but i didn't have time yeah so but anyway thanks guys yep thanks Always. hope everybody enjoyed and well, we're actually gonna end it now so. yeah we'll see ask you. any questions you know drop comments we'll be glad to answer them in the next episode yep all right we will see you next week with a new case deranged nation 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 nation
You've been listening to the Deranged Nation podcast. Join us every Wednesday night for a new episode as we bring you true crime, unsolved mysteries, and other deranged stories. This episode was sponsored by Braps MX and ATV Pro Shop. Visit them at brapsmx.pro. Also, visit our host, TeresaGableman.com, New York Times bestselling paranormal romance author of the Protector series, available on Amazon.com. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube.